Fantastycznie. Chciałem podziękować pani Katarzynie, bo tak naprawdę zrobiła mi bardzo fajny segue do mojej prezentacji. Właśnie rozwiązywanie problemów to jest moje hobby. Tak więc... Being, becoming a genius. I would like to welcome you with something that I usually say when I start my video tutorials, which is... Hello, my friends. My name is Maltanen. Welcome to this exciting tutorial. So, as some of you may know, I run a website called maltanen.com and I do um, cooperate strongly with EduWebPL, which has some uh, training courses and live seminars, uh, mostly about design, programming, web development, and things of that nature. However, today I would like to talk about something a little bit different. Um, I've started doing this about maybe seven years ago or something like that. I know I'm really not good with math in, in that way. Um, and uh, I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions from people. How did I get uh, to the place where I am today? So that's where I would like to start uh, with. So the first thing that I usually say is that it's all in your mind. It's basically your mindset. So mindset is everything. Whatever mind expects to happen tends to be realized. Uh, you might have heard a sentence like that before, uh, and you will hear a lot of sentences like that in this presentation. Um, this may seem a little bit cheesy or corny because you've heard it a lot, uh, but anyway, you are for a tasty treat with this presentation. So let me tell you, uh, where it all started with me, how this mindset of mine got created. And it all started with my personal hero, Professor Grumpy. Anybody knows Professor Grumpy from the old cartoons? No, really, no one? Okay. Um, that doesn't really surprise me because he's not really a hero figure uh, in that sense. Um, what do we dream about when we're kids? usually about becoming someone like a fireman, policeman, uh, a uh, astronaut, or something of that nature. Hardly anyone dreams about becoming a uh, chemist or a uh, lawyer or something like that. Uh, I was in the other group. I was in that other group. I was dreaming about becoming an inventor, and that happened after watching uh, this cartoon. Uh, so here we are. This, this is the cartoon, uh, and we've got the orphanage, of course, very poor. Uh, image and on Christmas, kids woke up and they uh, went to check out their gifts. And unfortunately, every single thing that they got was basically broken, didn't work, fell apart, and so on and so forth. So they were crying and there was misery and everything. So uh, Professor Grumpy, who was just happening, uh, he, he just happened to walk across the orphanage. He heard the cries and everything. So he put his thinking cap on and he thought. What can I do to fix this? Okay, so of course he got the idea. He was sitting there for for a couple of minutes, and he got the idea, and he got into the back and just took everything he could find, like everyday objects, like plates and 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 teapots and stuff like that, and he started to make these toys. And this is what actually brought me to the place that I am here right now, because after seeing this, I started to. Uh, passionately look for connections, for things, between things that are seemingly unrelated to each other. And I started to connect dots and seeing how one thing relates to another. And this is, this is a perfect example of that. I, I, just, I just was watching this cartoon over and over and over again. So connecting dots, seeing similarities is, is the key to this creative mindset. And Honestly, if you take a look at this contraption that's the scene here, if you look at it closely, you might think that it could actually work, right? <laughs> so you see this stuff, and, and, and it, was, it was really inspiring for me. So of course, the kids, uh, kids were brought to see their new gifts, and they were all having fun, and everybody was happy. So um, although uh, I would like to point out one thing, 
this might seem like a very original idea, and this is this is uh, one of the questions that I get a lot as well. How do I uh, how do I become so original with the things that I do? And the truth is that um, we would really have to define what originality is and what it means, um, because if you look far enough, far enough uh, into the past, you will see things that might explain the thing that you're ex experiencing right now. Uh, anybody seen the uh, Honda commercial, the COG commercial, where there are cogs and wheels and it basically looks like a Rube Goldberg contraption, like a mousetrap machine? This is actually the same thing, right? So uh, the question of originality is, is debatable. I could even say that there is no such thing as being original, but I won't go that far. So what did that cartoon do to, to, to my mind? I was watching this when I was like this little, okay? I, I, I don't know, maybe three, four, something like that. And by the way, that's the way how I learned English, I think. Uh, so this created this mindset of seeking those connections, connecting the dots. And this is what I call procedural and divergent thinking, which in my opinion is the essential capacity for creativity. This is not the same thing as creativity. However, <clears throat> being able to see different um, solutions to the same problem, different ways to get to a particular solution from a, from a particular place is something that may in the end end up as being defined as creative. So I'm gonna show you uh, a picture and I'm gonna ask you what is this? This is an example that I do with my, with my students online and on my uh, live seminars. So anybody? Okay. Um, the answer that I get a lot is obviously these are just four triangles, right? Okay, we can agree that these are just four triangles. Uh, some people say that these might be actually four squares, but we don't see the rest of the square because the image is cropped, okay? That's why I put this uh, gray background here so we can see that there's black and everything. So um, let me just show you what this actually is. So let's move to the, uh, to the next step and you will see that this will start to rotate. So the original image was rotated 45 degrees. Now we can see that those are four squares. But <laughs> are they? Now, this, as far as procedural thinking, uh, might seem a little bit too complicated to do because underneath procedural thinking uh, sits an idea that everything should be simple. It doesn't mean that it's easy to do, for example, but it's simple. It's formulation of the problem that matters the most. So if we would go to create an image like that in some algorithmic, procedural, step-by-step -step way, uh, we would have to first draw a circle. Okay, that's pretty easy. But then we would ha have to find the center of the circle and draw the diameters exactly in the middle and so on and so forth. Or we could do the arc math and so on and so forth. So that's kind of complicated. But since I'm doing this presentation and these examples on a specific environment for vis visual people uh, who work with applications like Adobe Photoshop or After Effects, uh, basically image processing. They do recognize tools like Blur, right? I think we all recognize things like Blur or um, Polar Coordinates. Anybody know that? Yeah, <laughs> one person. Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, what happens if we use polar coordinates, which is changing the coordinate system from rectangular to polar. So it basically wraps the image around itself. So I'm going to overlay a, a grid so we can see what happens. Okay, and now that is much easier to understand and much easier to define. Okay, that's much easier to define. It's just a simple gradient. What about colors? We can sort of estimate, we can guess, that those colors are equally spaced in the black to white spectrum, right? In the black to white gradient. And that's actually what it is. So if you look at this process in reverse, and this is what happens in my mind, by the way, all the time, uh, you start with this and you end up with that image, okay? And that image was the result that I was trying to achieve. Uh, so 
what does it actually mean? How can we apply this? My question to you is what those two images have in common? Doesn't seem like much, right? So let me just show you. We already know how to create the image on the left, okay? It's it's procedural image. We have a gradient that was wrapped around itself and we divided the whole spectrum of colors into four compartments. So now when we have something like that, we can, for example, use it as data. This doesn't have to be an image. Those are data. Pixels are data. Everything is data. So we can apply functions to data. And the function that I'm applying here is a simple displacement or extrusion, okay? And right now I have something that looks like a staircase. But not really because we've got only four steps. They are really high. It's really hard to walk up on something like that. So uh, since this is procedural, let's just increase the number of compartments, right? And we're now having a procedural solution that is flexible and we don't have to waste time redesigning it for example, for a client that we're working with, be it for a creative agency or whatever it is. It doesn't apply to graphics, it applies to everything. And you can even apply it to your personal life as well. So uh, again, how did I get here? All of this stuff, this is cool, right? Showing, showing how things relate to each other, but how did I get uh, the knowledge and experience? This is the question that I get asked a lot. And the answer is I was just pursuing my passion for looking for those dots and for looking for those connections. Uh, and that is what I believe uh, is the most important thing, staying true to yourself. Again, cheesy quote, right? But, but this is what actually happens. So since I was a little kid, I was looking for those connections. I was seeking them and trying them out. I actually had a friend when I was in primary school and we were meeting at his place after school and we were doing inventions. We were inventors. We one, one time we invented a, a motorized flower sprinkler that would spray water all over the place instead of the flower, of course. But, you know, who cared, right? It was fun. So uh, right now I perceive the world like that and um, curiosity and laziness, in my opinion, is the driving force of progress. If I wouldn't be excessively lazy, I would probably do the staircase manually every single time the client came back and said, okay, we, we need two steps more or three steps more. I'm not that kind of a person. I would just sit for three hours and think how to do it uh, in a way that I can change it later on. I believe that if something is worth doing once, it's also worth making a tool to do it for you, basically. Uh, and I'm not sure if Abraham Lincoln said that, actually. I've heard he did, but I couldn't find any references. But I did find a reference to him saying that if he is given eight hours to chop down a tree, he would spend six hours sharpening his ox. Okay, so that's the same, uh, that's the same principle here. And curiosity, just being curious and following your passion and then you can just uh, creative, quote unquote creative and quote unquote original ideas may emerge if you're curious and if you're looking for other stuff that are seemingly unrelated. So all of that brought me to a new definition of myself. Before I realized this, and this was recently, like maybe two or three years ago. Before that, I was being called a uh, designer, basically, okay, designer. And that sort of implied on me, on myself, how I felt about myself and what I was supposed to do and what I was supposed to achieve. Uh, and that's just plain wrong. Nobody should tell you what you should do if, if it's against your um, passion. So I was miserable. I'm, I'm, I'm a really poor designer as far as, as artistic stuff goes. Uh, I cannot draw my way out of a square box on a piece of paper, but, but I can think of a hundred ways to define that box and make it uh, editable and flexible and reusable. Reusability, another important thing. So 
creative problem solver. Solver. That was the first thing uh, I came up with. Actually, I didn't come up with it. We, you kind of hear these definitions all over. But the technical artist is what rose uh, from it, what evolved from it. Uh, and right now, I keep calling myself that, and I think it gives a pretty good image uh, of what I do. And what's more important, I finally came at peace with myself because um, I was no longer pursuing someone else's vision of what I should do. And the, 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 the worst thing is that I never realized that I was pursuing someone else's vision. People were calling me a designer, so I felt that I have to be a designer. That's, that's just not how it's supposed to be. Uh, so having said that, like I said, these are really corny and cheesy things that you might heard a lot. And the usual response is that people say, yeah, 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 we know all that, but how do you actually do it? There's no other way. This is it. This is it. Uh, the only thing you can do if you want to sort of evolve into this mindset or whatever mindset uh, you wish to have, creative mindset, let's call it, is stimulate your mind. Just stimulate your mind. and. Uh, the easiest way to do this, uh, and this is what I always, uh, always say and repeat over and over, is to simply change your environment. Change your environment, change something about your environment, or go out, meet new people, basically get out of the apartment, okay? And there's a, there's a really uh, cool video uh, for that. Tenacious D, the greatest band on earth. Can we put the uh, volume up a little bit? Sometimes you gotta leave your zone of safety. You have to manufacture inspirato. You gotta get out of the apartment. You've got to run with the wolves. You've got to dive into the ocean and bite with the sharks. Or just treat yourself to a delicious hot fudge sundae with nuts. Okay, these guys call themselves the greatest band on earth. It's just two guys, one of them can't play the guitar, the other one can't sing, and personally I think they revived the classic rock, at least for me, because they do an awesome job with it. Uh, so, let's move forward. Genius, no such thing. And I've been called that a couple of times. Uh, I, I don't say I don't enjoy it, but uh, I, I definitely do not agree that such a thing exists. Genius is the perceived geniuses are basically just projecting an image of being a genius and uh, being successful, which is all you need for success, really. That's what you might read in the self-help books and such things. Uh, so geniuses don't just sit around on their geniuses' butts and think geniuses' thoughts every genius morning. Every thought that they think is comes easy for them. It's, it's natural, and unless you share this, with other people, you will never know if it actually has um, practical value. It has value for you, I'm sure, but if it has practical value. This is, geniuses are the people that are usually uh, having this, um, this experience that people come up to them and say, whoa, I would never thought of that, okay? So this is, this is how you do it. You just gotta share it with other people. I think we uh, have a little bit of technical problems, but that's okay, I was just about to finish. So um, my point is that you should always share your thoughts and never ever uh, judge yourself uh, based on someone's authority. There's, that's another, uh, that's a whole another talk. I, I, I don't have time to talk about authority and judging and, and other stuff, but uh, if someone judges you, just just uh, just don't pay any attention to it. Just do what you do. Follow your passion. Follow your heart, um, and share it with other people. I remember things that might be true for them, they will try to impose on you, and they might not be true for you. Therefore, nothing is true, and everything is permitted. Thank you. <laughs> 